Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. Their partnership and rivalry goes back to the 2000s, and still to this day, they're not the best of friends. But who would have thought that after nearly 16 years, they would again be fighting over the same components? Well, we are there again, and after all these years, it could be Alonso who'll be picked over Hamilton this time. As Mercedes headquarters is looking to provide Lewis Hamilton's superior Mercedes engine, the Fernando Alonso, if Mercedes doesn't perform in the upcoming two races. Crazy story, right? Let's dive in and we'll fill you in on the details. Mercedes Formula 1 team has received a particularly vicious letter from the company's headquarters. If the Silver Arrows are unable to alter the tide in the first two races, headquarters will switch its attention to Aston Martin. Instead of the manufacturer team, the customer team would get the greatest engines. And yes, this will mean that Lewis Hamilton, who is now driving with the best Mercedes engine, will have to give up his title aspirations and engine to his arch-nemesis Fernando Alonso, with whom he shares a diabolical relationship ever since they raced together for McLaren in 2007. Throughout the week of testing, it became evident that Aston Martin had done a terrific job this winter, while Mercedes had troubles once again. This image was reinforced during the Bahrain Grand Prix. Mercedes were unable to make a fist as Fernando Alonso battled his way to the podium in his Aston Martin. Mercedes later indicated, through Toto Wolff, that they will dramatically alter their strategy to regain competitiveness. If this strategy does not bear fruit after two races, Mercedes management has alternative ideas. Being a key stakeholder in Aston Martin, it would want to concentrate on the customer team's success. But how does that work? All the engines were supposed to be the same during the engine freeze. Well, yes and no. While the engines of Mercedes and Aston Martin built at the Bricksworth facility are theoretically equivalent, there are minor differences in reality. The power units are all manufactured on the same principle, by the same hands and with the same materials, yet tiny variances in performance occur on a regular basis, owing to deviations, errors or failing components. As a result, the power units are thoroughly tested before being supplied to the teams. Normally, the engines with the greatest statistics would be sent to the Mercedes team, obviously as they are the manufacturer, but the higher-ups at the headquarters seem to think otherwise. Will this mean that Hamilton will be given up for Alonso? If Mercedes headquarters determines that helping Aston Martin succeed is more appealing from a sporting and commercial standpoint, the greatest engine will no longer go to Hamilton, but to Alonso. The word from headquarters has not gone down well with the German brand's Formula 1 squad. It will be interesting to watch how this revelation affects the discussions between Mercedes and Hamilton, as Hamilton will be out of contract at the end of the season. So, what happens if the results stay the same over the next two races? How would Mercedes navigate such a switch? It is said that the transfer to Aston Martin could happen swiftly by sending Hamilton's strongest engine to the Aston Martin facility. This is due to the fact that Hamilton's engine now produces up to 3 kilowatts, or around 4 horsepower more than Alonso's. If this bizarre possibility comes true, Aston Martin and Mercedes will team up against Red Bull Racing and Max Verstappen. If they still lose, Mercedes' failure will be much more painful. It was clear to see during the weekend that Mercedes had not anticipated for Aston Martin to be this strong. They will have to get their garage in order quickly if they want to retain the chances of challenging for race wins during the season. But the strongest Mercedes engines aren't the only thing that's on the line during the next two races, as some key staff are being pressured to perform during the same next two events. If not, they will be fired. Everything seems to be on the line right now at Mercedes. Could this be the end of an era? The first race of 2023 reaffirmed the original concerns about the Mercedes W14 from pre-season testing, with the German team behind the lead by several steps. Brackley is feeling disappointed and frustrated after making substantial progress by the end of 2022. The Red Bull RB19 demonstrated a huge edge over Ferrari and Mercedes throughout the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Hamilton and Russell could only achieve P5 and P7 on a W14 machine that lacked performance, proving that the Mercedes idea is a failure. We've done a lot of work over the past year to look at other types of solutions, but we keep coming back to this concept because it is one that favours us the most. Is it the right long-term solution? We'll find out. Mike Elliott defended his job. In Bahrain, the W14 was the fourth quickest car, even behind Aston Martin's AMR23 which also surpassed Ferrari in terms of raw speed. Toto Wolff was very harsh and emblematic of the situation at Mercedes post-race. It was one of the worst days since we've been racing in F1. Hamilton feels that progress has been achieved since pre-season, with the W14 improving in terms of rear stability and traction. 
Nevertheless, there's a lack of aerodynamic stress in medium high and high speed corners, which causes sliding and has a detrimental influence on tyre management in racing circumstances. Mercedes' overall performance was inconsistent as the team made many setup modifications over the race weekend. Nonetheless, the team's new medium low downforce rear wing produced some results. The spoon profile of the wing, with a form comparable to Ferrari and the rest of the grid, assisted the team in achieving improved aerodynamic efficiency. The Mercedes power unit no longer has the performance issues of last year, and excellent work has been made on the engine side. Mercedes was among the quickest on the straight with their medium load wing, even quicker than Red Bull, who no longer has such peak and speed advantage. But Mercedes will have to perform in the upcoming races if they want to keep this engine. Mercedes has done a lot of work in a short period of time, but Toto Wolff has come to the conclusion that the aerodynamic idea is fundamentally flawed. Mike Elliott's technical staff redesigned the zero side podded car for this year, making it less aggressive than the W13. Because the initial aerodynamic targets from the wind tunnel were not fulfilled, changes are currently in the works. Last year we had some problems, and we went through them, trying to figure out what they were and how to fix them. We believe we've solved some of them, while we still have to work on others, explained Hamilton at the W14 launch. Toto Wolff was quick to point out that the AMR23 features several Mercedes components following the Bahrain GP. The same engine, gearbox and suspension, and right now they're ahead of us. It is evident that there is something to be traced back to the aerodynamic DNA of our single-seater, and to the wind tunnel that does not allow us to be successful. After significant gains at the end of last season, the Mercedes W14 has fallen behind Red Bull, Ferrari and now Aston Martin during the winter break. The Silver Arrows did not start the season well, but the issue has only gotten worse. Mike Elliott, on the other hand, has highlighted the advantages. If you look at where we were last year, we had really big problems with porpoising. Over the winter, we solved many and we went into testing feeling like we had a better package to work with. Comparable to what occurred at Ferrari, the W14 underperformed in comparison to the poor gallery and simulator numbers. However, we believe we haven't gotten the best out of the car. We're still getting to Noah, the technical director concluded. W14 corrections are on the way, but Elliott faces an ultimatum to resurrect the project. Mercedes will need to make improvements to the W14 and its general idea. As Toto Wolff confirmed, George Russell emphasized the necessity of the W14 having a stronger starting point than last year's car, particularly in terms of resolving the porpoising issues. But given Red Bull's enormous strength, the W14's ultimate potential remains restricted. Nonetheless, improvements in setup may be made, but most importantly, a lot of work is being done in the wind tunnel. Mostly to find an aerodynamic concept that works and can enable Hamilton and Russell to fight the drivers up front. With the zero side pod idea failing to achieve the expected objectives, there will be a shift in thinking towards more traditional side pods. But they are insisting that they will not steal the concept of Red Bull, not Ferrari, during this process. We have different bodywork in the works, which will not be the same as that of the others, nor the one we have now. It will just be different, said Mike Elliott. It should be noted that Mercedes employs a single frame, which has flares on the sides for the team to place its radiators, which are then relocated along the car's longitudinal axis. The new side pods are part of the planned development on the W14. It takes time to bring it because we need to produce new parts and we need to change some parts that are underneath the bodywork to be able to assemble it. It will debut, we'll bring it as soon as possible. Nevertheless, Mike Elliott, the team's technical director, is feeling the strain. After the race, there was a lengthy discussion held at Mercedes that lasted until late at night. The atmosphere at Mercedes is molded by an ultimatum issued to the team's technical director, who is entrusted with restarting the ongoing project. The technical director will only have the next two races to provide the needed improvements if he wants to keep his job, and also if Mercedes want to keep their engines. But rumors have stated that the new designed W14 will only be ready at the Emilia Romana Grand Prix in the middle of May, which might be too late to salvage the engineers or any jobs. Will Mercedes be able to keep their engines? And will Elliott be able to keep his job? Let us know in the comments down below. We can't wait to see what happens at the next Grand Prix and if Mercedes are able to speed up their upgrade process. Otherwise, it's looking like Alonso, after all these years, will finally be picked above Lewis Hamilton.